We have all ran into a formula error at some point in our Excel career. Nothing is worse than spending hours writing a formula only for it to result in an error. In this video, we are going to look at what each formula error means so that if you do encounter an error, you know how to quickly fix it and can move on with your day. If you still can't figure out how to fix your formula error after watching this video, drop a description of the error in the comments below and we'll see if we can help. Let's get started. First up, let's start with an easy one, the divide by zero error. Excel returns the divide by zero error if a value is being divided by zero. This is because dividing a number by zero is considered mathematically impossible, even though it's sometimes unavoidable when working with averages. To resolve the divide by zero error in this case, you would need to use the if error function and set any value that results in the error equal to zero. For example, here we calculated each product's cost per unit, but the mouse pad and iPhone case resulted in the divide by zero error because we haven't sold any units yet. To fix this, we need to wrap the cost per unit formula in the if error function, enter a zero as a value of error argument, and fill the formula down the column. The next error we're going to debug is the name error. Excel returns the name error when it doesn't recognize the function in the formula. Typically, when you see this error, you're using a formula that doesn't exist in your version of Excel, or there is a spelling error in your formula. For example, if I'm totaling yearly sales using the sum function and accidentally hit the D key instead of S, Excel returns the name error because it doesn't recognize the function dumb. So if you see this error, double check that all of the functions are spelled correctly and that the formula exists in your Excel version. Next up is the infamous NA error. If you've ever worked with lookup functions, I'm sure you've encountered this error. Nothing is worse than building a complex lookup function and pressing enter only for it to result in NA. Luckily, it's pretty straightforward to fix. Excel returns the NA error when it can't find a reference value. For example, here we have a VLOOKUP function that looks up the sales representative in this data that corresponds to the sale ID. It resulted in NA because it couldn't find a match to the sale ID in the data table. So if we double check the first column of the data, we can see that this value actually doesn't exist. To prevent this error in this case, we would have to use the if error function to set a default value if there are no matches in the data. Let's look at one more example. Here we have the same VLOOKUP function, but this time we are looking up this sale ID. This also resulted in an NA error, but when we investigate this by double checking to see if it exists in the first column of the data, we see that it actually does exist. So what the heck is happening? If your lookup function returns NA when the value exists in your data table, there is most likely a formatting mismatch. The lookup value has to be the same format as the data you are searching. So if we take a closer look at this, the lookup value is actually a number stored as a text value, while the sale IDs in the data are number values. To fix this, we just need to format the lookup value by clicking the triangle with an exclamation point icon, and then selecting convert to number to match the data's format. The following error is another extremely common cell reference error, the ref error. Excel returns the ref error when a formula contains an invalid cell reference. One of the most common causes of this is when a cell reference in a formula is deleted. So for example, here I calculated total northern sales by adding together the north Northwest, and Northeast region. Now, let's say we went to hide row seven to condense the table, and we accidentally hit the delete command instead of hide. As you can see, our calculation now equals a ref error because we deleted one of the values that the formula was summing. To fix this, we need to press Control Z to undo the delete action, and our formula is back safe and sound. If you realize this too late and don't have the option to use Control Z, you will have to re-enter the cell reference in the formula. To avoid ref errors, be very careful when deleting rows, columns, and cells. The next error we're going to solve is the value error. Excel returns the value error if there is an unexpected value within a formula. Excel's functions expect a specific type of value to be entered for each argument, so if it comes across an unexpected value, it results in the value error. For example, here we have the same northern sales calculation that sums each northern region. We just received an updated sales number for the northwest region, and when I go to paste it in, I accidentally paste the wrong item from the clipboard. 
Instead of pasting the updated sale amount, I pasted the name Emma. Now our formula results in the value error because you can't add text values. So when you're troubleshooting a value error, make sure that all of your arguments contain the correct data types. The next error we're going to look at is a newer error that occurs when using array functions, the spill error. Excel returns the spill error when there are values blocking the result of our formula. So for example, here we are using the rand array function to return a random array, but it results in the spill error. This is because there is already data in the cells the function needs to use to return the array. To fix this, all we have to do is delete the data blocking the result, and that's it. Now our formula has room to breathe and works perfectly. The next error we're going to debug also commonly occurs when using array functions, the calc error. Excel returns the calc error when the calculation engine encounters a scenario that it does not support. The most common example of this is when an array function returns an empty array. For example, here we are using the filter function to filter this data set on Emma Chip sales data, but the formula results in the calc error. This is because Emma Chip does not exist in this data set, so the formula has nothing to return. To avoid this error, we can use the if empty argument to set a default value for the filter function to return if there is no result. So to return the word none if no values meet the criteria, I would enter none in double quotations as the if empty argument in the formula bar, and then enter the function. Now the filter function returns the word none, which is a little bit less intimidating than the calc error. The last two errors we are going to look at are less common, but are good to know just in case you stumble across one when you are deep in the sheets. First is the num error. Excel returns the num error when a formula contains a numeric value that isn't valid. An invalid numeric value can be a number that is too large or too small for Excel. For example, if I raise 10 to the power of 500, Excel returns the num error because the result is larger than Excel's number limit. Another more common cause of the num error is when there is an invalid numeric range in a formula. For example, here the RAM between function results in the num error because the max value of the range is less than the min value. The last error we're going to look at is the null error. This error is also less common, but can happen if you're not careful when entering ranges. Excel returns a null error if you use an incorrect range operator. For example, here I'm using the sum function to sum up 2020 and 2021 sales, but it results in the null error. If we take a closer look at the formula, I forgot to enter the comma between each range to indicate that these are separate ranges. So the function is trying to read this as one range. We can easily fix this by adding a comma between the two ranges, and now our function is back on schedule. To wrap up, we covered each formula error and how to quickly fix them. If you're working with a lot of formulas in Excel, formula errors are almost unavoidable. That's why it's so important to know why the error is occurring and how to quickly fix it so you don't spend hours going in circles trying to figure out what went wrong. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe to our channel for more.